All right, let's talk about some of the services that we'll deliver via infrastructure as a service. First, let's go back to what infrastructure as a service looks like. Here we have our physical servers that are in a, in a, in a data center, which we'll talk about later. So this is, this is hardware. These are, these are basically, if you were to think about it, you would have laptops, maybe uh, some kind of com you know, computers, and you're going to have those inside of the data center. You have your virtualization, which allows us to take advantage of these resources and, and make the most use out of it. So this is vert, virtualization. And then we're going to build our services on top of this infrastructure as a service. First one we're going to talk about is really the simplest form of the service that we deliver on infrastructure as a service, which is a virtual machine. A virtual machine is pretty straightforward. In the traditional world, this would be a physical box, a physical piece of equipment that sits on a desk or sits in a server room. Really not a whole lot different, except this is now just software. So we have a virtual machine. It's now software. It's built on the same components of vCPU, VRAM, and storage. And an IT administrator will install an operating system inside of this. So you may be, it might be Windows. That's installed in inside of this software container or virtual machine. And then from there, they may use, may use it for QuickBooks. They may use it for some kind of application, line of business application. And then this will again reside and, and take advantage of these resources from the infrastructure as a service. The next uh, example of services that we deliver on top of infrastructure as a service is going to be email. So this would be a, a server or VM. An example would be Microsoft Exchange. And essentially, a user sits up here and they have Outlook. They click on send. That email is going to go to their email server. Most people have email. This is what happens. This is the flow. This email server still has the same components of vCPU, VRAM, and storage. The email server is then going to deliver that message to where it needs to go, to the recipient. So that's virtual servers and email, specific to email. Then we're going to have disaster recovery as a service. And with disaster recovery as a service, the way that works is you may have a building that your, your business uh, exists in, and you may have your own servers here. So you're not using the cloud in this scenario. But you need to protect that data. So what we're going to do is establish a replication of that data that happens on a regular basis. It's going to go down to an environment. It could be multiple, uh, multiple virtual machines. And if for some reason this gets blown away by a tornado or a hurricane, this data is already here. And we're going to bring these up and put them into a running state. And now we have the environment running in this data center. So this is another example of leveraging these infrastructure as a service resources for, in this case, disaster recovery as a service. Next, we have desktop as a service. Really, desktop as a service is not much different than virtual machines. We're going to have an environment here. Each of these virtual machines is going to represent a, really a desktop, but we're changing it from the consideration of a physical computer or a physical laptop and we're representing that as a desktop. And a user would exist out in the world, leveraging the internet at Starbucks, whatever it may be, and they're going to be accessing this virtual desktop that's leveraging these infrastructures as service cloud resources. Next is security. And really, security kind of overlays on, on, on these services here, but it is still a, a, a cloud-delivered, uh, or can be a cloud-delivered service that sits on top of infrastructure as a service. We, made, we might secure desktop as a service with two-factor authentication. We may have Mimecast in front of the email so that we can filter all the bad emails. For disaster recovery as a service, we might be leveraging an IPsec tunnel or uh, an encrypted uh, delivery method so that all of this traffic is secure and we're delivering part of that in that infrastructure as a service in the cloud. And another example would be backup as a service. So not a whole lot different in this scenario to disaster recovery as a service. In this case, we're simply saying from wherever out in the world we have our, our production data, we're going to take a copy of it on some schedule and send it to the cloud. Now, usually backup as a service is only leveraging storage resources, but it could be doing more. There could be kind of a hybrid of backup as a service and disaster recovery as a service. But the point here is that we're leveraging the underlying resources of infrastructure as a service, and we're, we're putting these individual services on top of that, and we're doing that very responsibly.